Antony van Leeuwenhoek A Dutch scientist named Antony van Leeuwenhoek was a microscope expert who first observed bacteria and protozoa. Thanks to his research, Antony Leeuwenhoek refuted the doctrine that living organisms develop from inanimate objects. He was also instrumental in laying the foundations for the sciences of bacteriology and protozoology. Antony van Leeuwenhoek cloth trader who became a microbiology expert. Antony was born on October 24, 1632 in Delft, Netherlands. When he was very young, Antony lost his biological father. This made her mother remarry a Dutch painter, Jacob Jans Molagen. When he was a young adult, around 20 years old, Antony proved himself capable of becoming a linen drapery merchant after being sent as an apprentice to Amsterdam in 1648, the year his stepfather died. He returned to Delft and married in 1654 the son of a cloth merchant. From his first wife, he had five children but only one survived from childhood. In 1671, Antony remarried but in 1694, his second wife also died. Starting from a hobby. In 1660, Antony got a job position as housekeeper to the sheriffs of Delft. With his income secure, he began devoting most of his time to his hobby of sharpening lenses and using them to study small objects. Antony built a microscope consisting of a single high-quality lens with a very short focal length. In those days, such simple microscopes were preferred to compound microscopes, which increased the problem of chromatic aberration. Although Antony's studies lacked a formal scientific research organization, his powers of careful observation allowed him to make very important discoveries. In 1674, he likely observed protozoa for the first time and a few years later bacteria. He can cage these very small animals from various sources, such as rainwater, pond, and well water, as well as the human mouth and intestines. In fact, he also calculated the size. In 1677 he described for the first time what spermatozoa were found in insects, dogs, and humans, with Stephen Ham possibly being his research assistant. Antony studied the structure of optic lenses, muscle striations, insect mouthparts, and the fine structure of plants and discovered parthenogenesis in aphids. In 1680 he noticed that yeast consisted of small round particles. He expanded on Marcello Malpighi's 1660 demonstration of blood capillaries by providing the first accurate description of red blood cells and for his observations on Roti Fers in 1702, Antony said that, in all the rain that falls, which is carried from the gutter to the water but, animal kula are to be found, and that in all kinds of water, which are in the open air, animal kula can also be found. Because these animal kula can be carried by the wind, along with dust fragments floating in the air, Royal Society and Subsequent Discoveries A friend of Antony's connected him with the Royal Society of England, with whom he communicated by informal letters from 1673 to 1723 most of his discoveries and he was elected a scientific fellow in 1680. His discoveries were mostly published in the Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society. The first representation of bacteria was found in a drawing by Antony van Leeuwenhoek in a 1683 publication. His research into the life history of these various forms of small animal life contradicted the doctrine that they could be produced spontaneously or grow from inanimate matter. Thus, he showed that granary beetles in his time usually bred from wheat as well as in it were actually maggots that hatched from eggs deposited by winged insects. His letters on lice, in which he not only describes their structure but traces the entire history of their metamorphosis, are very interesting, not so much for the precision of their observations as for the illustration of his opposition to many doctrines of the spontaneous generation of lower organisms, such as this very small and hated creature. 
Some theorists claim that fleas were produced from sand, others from dust or the like, but Antony proved that they reproduced in the usual way like winged insects. Also carefully, he studied the history of ants. In fact, he was the first to show that ant eggs were actually their cocoons, containing perfect insects ready to be born into the world. He also pointed out that actual eggs are much smaller. Regarding shells, Antony argues that seashells and other shellfish do not result from sand found on beaches or mud on riverbeds at low water but from reproduction, regularly over generations. Apart from ants and seashells, Antony also showed his findings about freshwater shellfish, their embryos which were examined very carefully, about eels, and others. His dramatic discoveries made him very famous and he was visited by many figures including Peter I the Great of Russia, James II of England and Frederick II the Great of Prussia. The microscope method is still a mystery. Antony's secret microscope method still remains a mystery. During his life, he has used more than 500 lenses, most of which are very small. They are so small for the size of the lenses, some are no bigger than the head of a pin. Large samples of such lenses, bequeathed to the Royal Society, were found to have magnifying powers in the range of 50 to, at most, 300 times. To observe phenomena as small as bacteria, Antony van Leeuwenhoek must have used some form of oblique illumination, or other technique, to increase the effectiveness of the lens, but this method he never revealed. The cloth merchant who became the father of microbiology continued his research almost until the end of his life for 90 years. Antony died on August 26, 1723. His contributions to the Philosophical Transactions numbered 375 works and to the memoirs of the Paris Academy of Sciences numbered 27. Two collections of his works appeared during his lifetime, one in Dutch 1685 to 1718 and the other in Latin 1715 22 a collection of selected works translated by Samuel Houle, under the title Selected Works of Antony van Leeuwenhoek 1798 to 1807.